Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out top 10 Britishisms that confuse the rest of the world. We can be an eccentric bunch, can't we? Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Britishisms that always confuse the rest of the world. Okay. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Nice. For this list, we'll be looking at the British behaviours and mannerisms that often leave the rest of the planet scratching their heads, and hopefully, we'll supply some sort of clarity in the process. Great. So, here goes. I have no idea what they're going to say. Maybe driving on the left side of the road. Maybe beans on toast. Spotted dick. I don't know. Let's see. Confuse me. Number 10, euphemisms. If I say, would you like to grasp my rod, that's innuendo. Sometimes, well, well, a lot of the time, classic British politeness can get in the way of us Brits expressing our true feelings and saying what we actually mean. And while other countries do use euphemisms, few throw them into casual conversation quite as willingly as we do. That's not a euphemism. So if we reckon that someone's kicked hmm. in the bucket, that someone hasn't actually kicked anything because they're dead. If someone's getting on a bit, then they're old. If they are not the sharpest pencil, then they're one sandwich short. And by that, we mean <laughs> they're not the brightest. As in, you know, they're dumb. If you're strong and stable, you're probably on the brink of catastrophe. Pretty simple, really. What was that last one? If you're what? If you're strong and stable, you're probably on the brink of catastrophe. I think the only one of those I haven't heard is strong and stable. That means that you're not strong and stable? Hmm. Well, I, I am confused. Number nine, plane, train, and bird spotting. Is it just us who are like this? In the British, I mean. Are there any train spotters in Sicily? Train if you spotters. Had a Hollywood paparazzi might stake out a spot for hours to get a snapshot of the likes of Kim Kardashian or Leo DiCaprio. A contingent of hardy Brits do the same for uh, the southeastern service to Three Bridges. Hey, it's what? no more entertaining than the Kardashians, and certainly more useful. But it's not just train spotting that tickles British fancies. There's also the exhilarating rush of plane and bird spotting. I know a cracking owl sanctuary. <laughs> How about it? Which gives a whole new, more literal meaning to the phrase, is it a bird, is it a plane? Because, well, it's both. What luck. Thank heavens we didn't write Superman, right? Okay. I've seen the movie Train Spotting and I like it a lot, but I didn't know that was a thing. I've heard of bird watching. That's not confuse me. Oh, bird spotting, though. They call it bird spotting. Train spotting is the practice of watching trains. You gotta be really into trains. One who engages in train spotting is a train spotter. <laughs> I'm confused. These first two have confused me. This video is proving to be exactly what the title says. Number eight, using two taps instead of one. As if the humble downstairs loo wasn't enough to blow the minds of non-Brits in the first place. Once they're inside, anyone who's not from these parts is soon struck with the shocking realization that there's not one, but two taps. Two taps? Why do you need two taps? Both hot and cold go and come from the same tap. It's a modern marvel. Technology. Why would you have two taps? As cultural stereotypes kick in, they ponder whether one is for lager or tea. But no, rather than <laughs> hot and cold water coming from the... That would be amazing to have one tap just for tea or lager. That would be a wonderful thing. Let's do that. Work on that, whoever you are, doing that kind of stuff. Do it. Plumber. Same place, for most Brits, it comes out of two entirely separate openings. They're usually labelled or colour-coded, but what if they're not? You could soon find yourself scolded or uncomfortably frozen. Yeah. Blimey, the fun. Yeah, this is confusing because what if your hot water is way too hot and you just need to add a little bit of cold water into it so that you don't burn your hands while you're washing dishes? I'm confused. What's going on in Britain? Number seven, hot drinks in high summer. It's very hot. Mm. It's too hot. What's the temperature? No, I'm not 12. Record-breaking high temperatures. Everyone's flocked to the beach like sweaty sardines. Shops have run out of electrical fans. Dr. Surgeries are inundated with heat stroke complaints. And <laughs> yet, you still can't say no to a cuppa, can you? The planet could be hit by a solar flare direct from the sun and someone somewhere would still be sticking the kettle on. While anyone from outside the UK would likely take the obvious action of hydrating themselves with an ice-cold beverage in extreme heat, Brits yeah. aren't stereotyped as tea drinkers for nothing. And it's scientifically proven to help cool you down anyway. Just what? saying. Perfect. I'll get the kettle on. I could kind of understand this one. There's something about, like, I'm a coffee drinker, and even when it's hot, I still want that warmth, that mouth pleasure. Uh... 
It's good. Good. I get this. I'm not confused by this one. I relate. I'll get the, I'll get the kettle on. Number six, car boot sales. In a technological age, you can oh. order goods from anywhere in the world, at any time, straight to your doorstep. Whatever the cost, condition, or necessity of any item, it's put a button click away from being yours. But even the heady highs of contemporary living won't stop a Brit from setting their alarm to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning to see what bargain they can land in the middle of a muddy field from out the back of somebody's car. Five pounds. Well, here's the only grail. Fiver. Take it or leave it. The <laughs> argument that it's easier to trade online doesn't deter the sellers either. Because why bother making daily treks to the post office to drop off endless eBay parcels when you can just hand it over for cold hard cash on a windy hmm. Wimbledon common? French Oak, 1890s, Gateway to Narnia. Lovely marketing work <laughs> on the doors. 250. Gateway to Narnia. Well, I think this is a great idea. We don't really have boot sales in America. We have yard sales and garage sales. But it would be good to have a central place where everybody could just bring a bunch of crap in their car try to sell it. I guess we have flea markets, but but we take it out of the car and display it. But it would be good to just leave it in the leave it in the trunk or the boot. Just leave it in there. There's no need to unload it. I get this. That's not confusing. I'm in. Number five, sarcastic protest slogans. Done with this sort of thing. Careful now. While we're all too used to protesters brandishing signs decorated with angry slogans, straightforward ire isn't really our style. Instead, we like to get creative and crack a few jokes for good measure. This particular trend was no more evident than when US President Donald Trump made a controversial trip to the UK in 2018. Yes. Such headings on display were Trump as welcome as a World Cup third place playoff and that hair is a horcrux. It's yet to be confirmed <laughs> if JK Rowling herself was holding that particular placard. Or if Voldemort's face lives on the back of Trump's head. Humpty Trumpty lie after lie. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get political, but I don't like that guy. I wish they gave more examples. We're going to have to lock him up. All in all, you're just another prick with no wall. <laughs> That's good. That's great. I hate Trump more than I hate crowds. <laughs> I guess so. Trump's better than out in. Trump's out better than in. Um, they just need to order the words a little better and maybe choose one font, you know? I'd call him a C-word, but he lacks depth and warmth. <laughs> That's really good. Ah, <laughs> uh, vagina. I took the day off work and found a babysitter. Came all this way just to tell you you're a wanker. <laughs> you suck at golf. Oh, that that probably will get to him more than any other sign. Dear Queen, don't offer him the good biscuits. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know the difference. Trump is the only baby who should be caged. Oh, damn, that's a bar. Because y'all, he was separating children from their families when they came over from Mexico. Ikea has better cabinets. <laughs> Dang. Impeach him by the pussy. <laughs> These are good. Oh my god, this isn't confusing at all. These are wonderful. Down with this sort of thing. <laughs> That's the most British one I've seen yet. We're British, we're polite, but F off, please. <laughs> good, good. Litter and dog waste. <gasps> y'all, this is good. Good work, y'all. We need more of that kind of stuff. Very creative. Way to go, Brits. Number four, the sending and receiving of greeting cards. Okay, so this one's not something that only happens in the UK, but few places write, post, or proudly display anywhere near as many cards as in Britain. Having an array of birthday cards lovingly assembled across a shelf or mantelpiece just isn't as common elsewhere. Nor is stringing up your Christmas cards to dangle across the living room wall, mm. or having multiple stores along most high streets dedicated to the token gestures in their various forms. Because don't forget, it's not just the obvious cards that Brits exchange. There's also congratulations cards, sorry it's late cards, thank you for your thank you card cards. Yeah, the list goes on. I don't know, that's not really confusing. I've seen them displayed on a shelf. I personally don't do that, but I've seen it done. It does seem like a British thing, though. Not confusing. Number three, not tipping as standard. In some parts mm. of the world, and in North America especially, yeah. tipping is practically mandatory. 
But here, it's definitely optional, and it's an option to be thought long and hard about before taking. <laughs> no, I don't tip. You don't tip? No, I don't believe in it. It's true that should someone from the US choose to work as a waiter in London, for example, they may be left dumbfounded at not receiving a few extra quid mm. from clearly satisfied customers. However, most Brits will, sometimes begrudgingly, pay up out of plain old-fashioned politeness, and the lack of a guaranteed tip means that British bosses don't have an excuse to supply unreasonably low wages. For every cloud, eh? I guess when you put it like that, tipping does seem like a British thing. It seems like um, etiquette type of thing that you would do. Yeah, I'm a little confused by this, because it does seem like the British would be into tipping. Number two, saying sorry when you've not done anything wrong. Uh, hi everyone, my name's Jim, and I have a fear of apologies. Sorry? Ah! <laughs> sorry, but Brits do tend to say sorry a lot. And a lot of hmm. the time, we aren't even that apologetic about whatever prompted our apparent regret. You might say it when you've simply misheard what someone has said, at no fault of anyone's. You might start asking for a favour by strangely apologising for it first. I'm sorry, you've got to be f***ing kidding. Okay! <laughs> hey, even when someone else clearly has done something wrong to us, like barging past us in the street, we'll more than likely find ourselves saying sorry to them, and basically apologising on their behalf so they don't have to. Please, well, just tell us you forgive us so we can all move on. Hmm. Ooh, um, that did sound a little demanding, didn't it? Sorry about that. This is interesting. I hear people do that a lot in America, but I guess maybe the British do it more often. Sorry. 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 Sorry, you don't want to be a burden. Sorry. Uh, the only thing that's confusing is that it's a British thing. I guess the British do it more. Sorry about that. Number one, creative swearing. Ooh. You coming gay! <laughs> Being the cheeky gits that we are, us Brits have come up with various unique swear words that if used to insult an outsider, can even leave the outsider not realising that they've actually just been insulted. <laughs> the daft awesome. sods. Oh, everyone knows fast spenders. <laughs> For example, if someone calls you a pillock or a numpty, chances are they don't believe that you're very bright. And if you mm. don't understand that, then your numpty status only increases. Elsewhere, we have a myriad of misdirecting terms to describe how drunk someone is or was. And when it comes to voicing our own frustration, there's a plethora of pretty weird ways to do so. Yeah, this isn't confusing though. This is a wonderful thing. I think I reacted to a video about British swearing and I learned some words I hadn't heard before. Like pillock, like you mentioned. Mm, mang, mang, manger? Minger? Minger. I don't remember anymore. But they were very creative. A few of these are very confusing. And a few of them are confusing that it's a British specific thing. Let me see. Let's recap. Euphemisms. Is that confusing? I think that was confusing to me, yeah. Train spotting. Confusing. Two taps. Very confusing. Y'all. Hot drink in the high summer. I kind of get it. Car boot sales. I get it. Sarcastic protest slogans. I love that. Greeting cards. I get it. No, that makes sense. That's very British. Tipping. Yeah, I'm surprised the British aren't more into tipping because it seems like giving greeting cards and also saying sorry a lot, you know? Sorry for being a burden on you, sir. Here's some extra money. Sorry. Creative swearing. Yeah. I love these Britishisms. Wonderful. This was a great video. Thank y'all for watching it with me, and I'll see y'all next time. Later.